We see the headlines every day. Somewhere, someone has been a victim of domestic violence. Did we think it wouldn't happen here in DeSoto? Domestic violence is the highest reported crime in the city of DeSoto, and it has been for many years. Hello, I am Curtis Dean McCowan, the proud mayor of the All-America City of DeSoto, and it is my pleasure and my honor to welcome you to another segment on Focus on Leadership. Today, I am very honored to have as my guest one of our outstanding leaders who has been instrumental in the City of DeSoto's education awareness campaign and collaborative partnerships related to domestic violence. And so I want to welcome our current chair of the Domestic Violence Advisory Commission, Mary Kay Dewberry. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, and thank you for joining us today. When I ran for City Council in 2012, one of the issues I wanted to see our city address was the eradication of domestic violence. Our police chief, Joe Costa, and I met and agreed that an advisory committee would be an invaluable resource to the police department. Following two horrific incidents in our city in 2013 and 2014, we knew it was time for our city to take action. My colleagues on the city council agreed. So on September 16, 2014, Council approved a resolution creating the Domestic Violence Advisory Committee. On February 15, 2016, the Council strengthened the role of the advisory group by passing an ordinance making it the Domestic Violence Advisory Commission. And so uh, with that, Mary Kay, I uh, just wonder if we could just talk a little bit about uh, just what you know about the background of the creation of the Domestic Violence Advisory Committee, because I know you've been engaged in the community and you can at least share with us what your understanding is of why the committee and some of the uh, activities that the committee has been engaged in since its inception. I'd be glad to address that. Uh, we were thrilled as citizens to find out that that is the direction that the city had chosen to, to go, and I'm just thrilled and honored to be a part of it. And we've got a very balanced board in that we were very thoughtful in trying to get a mix of uh, dissection of experts, um, education, pastors, et cetera, so we'd have a balance because, of course, we were new at this too, as was the city, so we were going to have to do some uh, research and explore what the resources are, what approach we want to take, and how can we build our strategic plan to the goal of the city. Okay, thank you so much. Now, we are approaching our fourth anniversary uh, of DVAC, as we also call it. We affectionately call the Domestic Violence Advisory Commission, DVAC, just so you will know um, uh, what I'm referring to when I use that acronym. So I'd like for you to share with our audience a little bit, if you will, about the makeup of the commission, when you meet, what a typical agenda looks like uh, for your meetings, and talk about our collaborative partnerships, past events. Just share as much as you can about that. Okay, and thank you so much for allowing us to do this. Uh, we have 10 commissioners positions, and currently we have former Mayor Pro Tem Denise Valentine, okay. Elma Goodwin, Holly Odie, Attorney Gwen Hunt, DeSoto ISD liaison is Renee Thomas, we have Dr. Janice Pettis Ingram, and we also have two positions for DPAC, okay. that's uh, DeSoto Police and Clergy Group, okay. And those delegates to the board currently are Dr. Josh Rivera and also the vice chair, Dr. Robert Jackson. We meet the third Wednesdays of each month at 8 a.m. at the police department. And typically, um, as um, we're proud to say in most of the meetings in DeSoto, we start with the invocation. Okay. And uh, of course, welcome any visitors. We try to have a guest speaker at least once a month. 
Uh, we're exploring our partnerships uh, and building the relationships with the current partnerships, but we're also looking for new partnerships. So we try to find out about them and let them know what our goals mm -hmm. are and find out where we can um, partner. We also have the council liaison, who is Candace Quarles, yes. and the staff liaison is Charlotte Berry, and of course she's the victim's advocate with the police department. And we also have the PD liaison, Sergeant C. David Williams, and our typical agenda includes his presentation to us of the previous month's statistical report. That lets us know uh, how many cases we had, uh, what the type of cases were, whether they were assaults with weapons, without weapons, um, what type of a incident it was, male, female, the age range, etc. It's the basic information that the police department is required to report to the state, so we wanted to keep our eye on that to mm -hmm. measure are we making an impact, are the stats reducing. And I'm proud to say with our meeting uh, that occurred yesterday, in fact, that uh, year over year our stats have gone down in every category from 2 to 12 percent. Now mind you, we've got the holidays coming up oh, and yeah. typically, you know, we all have that one family member that yes. can <laughs> rile things up. So, but we're, we're seeing the trend uh, year over year overall is reducing. We have partners such as Brighter Tomorrows, The Family Place, Women mm -hmm. Called Moses, Arise International, Genesis, our newest partner, the DeSoto Library, and of course others that have joined our meetings. And um, we've successfully launched last year our first symposium, Chasing the Sky. We planned for 100 to 150 people and are, we're proud and overwhelmed to say there were 330 wow. that attended. <laughs> so uh, we interpreted that to mean that the citizens are ready to talk about domestic violence yes. and, and to become more aware of, of domestic violence. Uh, we, on one of our favorite events every year, we participate in the back to school fair. And uh, we, we feel like through research that the bullying in the schools is where domestic violence often begins. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've grown up with it, maybe they're in the foster system, uh, but we, we want to reach the children early on. So yes. we have a Stop Bullying campaign uh, that we launch uh, each year with that event. And typically every year when we have any of our events, there are always those that come up to us and tell their story. And that tells us that there was a need, there mm -hmm. is a need, continues to be a need, and we're so proud that the city recognized this and created our commission. Well, thank you so much. You know, um, I know that you have come to our Mayor's Quarterly, uh, my Mayor's Quarterly, and you've spoken at the last two meetings, and it is just very, very interesting that we still have people in the community that don't know that we have this commission and really don't know the stats, uh, that this is the highest still domestic and family violence as far as police reports, it still rates the highest in our community. You wanna come in about that? That's correct. In fact, um, we have a uh, float in the homecoming parade is when we first launched it last year. And on this float, uh, our symbol is the purple pinwheel. Yes. And on the float, we represent each victim from the previous year in DeSoto with a purple pinwheel. This year, the float will have 539 victims represented. It is the number one crime in DeSoto. Mm -hmm. That's less than we had last year, but we've still got a lot of work to do. We do, indeed we do. Now, would you say domestic violence is both physical and mental America? I think it's both. And, and I also think that you can add the, um, on the mental side, the emotional uh, trauma, the emotional control, but also financial. Mm -hmm. um, the decision to stay in a domestic violence situation is often driven by the fact of finances. You know, uh, either there's been control over the finances or they haven't had access to their money, whoever the victim is. And that fear of how am I gonna start over when I don't have an income or I don't have access to funds. So we've included that in our summer uh, small body classes that we've had 
uh, to build awareness that there are resources available to help you sort those things out. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, in many cases, people see someone being abused and they just don't want to get involved. So what are the best practices and, and just advice you would recommend, uh, you would give for handling this? You know, you see someone, I know we say if we see something, say something, but what's, what's your best advice? That's a question we get very often. And um, we feel that it's best if you're armed with information because that removes the emotional, the judgmental aspect of the discussion. But um, part of the resource groups that we partner with, one of the things that they guide their clients with is the fact that you need to find one trusted person outside of your family, mm -hmm. whether it's a neighbor, a coworker, or whatever. And that's difficult for the victim to do, but it's also difficult for the recipient of that information. So what we did as a commission is we created a resource repository, and it's cur it currently has a link to it on the DeSoto Library website. There are over 250 resources on there that are within a 25 mile radius of DeSoto. Whether it's what do I do with my pet if I leave, what do I do if I have to change schools mm -hmm. with the kids, how do I get them to school, how do I have clothes for a job interview? Yes. All of the different aspects of the situation are represented in that resource repository. We also uh, worked with the city and we now have framed posters in all the male and female, uh, the male and women's uh, restrooms at city center. Mm -hmm. And this poster has the hotline number to get help, but it also has information on knowing the signs. A lot of people don't realize because it's their normal right. that they're in an actual domestic violence situation. And so if someone comes to uh, you and want you to be their trusted person, their go-to person, and share the information with you, you can snap a picture of this and very discreetly get this information to them without putting them in harm's way. The victims can also gain access to that restroom and see the information. Yeah. So that's one thing that, that we just did. Also, our next symposium is coming up on October the 20th, and it's called Imagine a World Without Bullying, Human Trafficking, and Domestic Violence. Mm. At this symposium, both the victim, the families, um, the perpetrators can learn information available. We're hoping that teachers and counselors, pastors, foster parents, parents, grandparents, and youth and senior citizens will attend this because what you're going to learn there is we have a panel of victims who are now victorious over domestic Wonderful. violence, and they're going to share their story in a segment called, Can We Talk? Uh, wonderful. Then we will have a very strong panel that will cover human trafficking and bullying. Human trafficking is real, and it's in yes, our it area. Is. It's in Beth Southwest. We need to inform parents and arm them with information to know how to protect their kids and their grandkids mm -hmm. from this happening. Um, there is also going to be law enforcement, how to make a report to the police, how to be prepared with the proper information so you can do a complete report, and uh, how the police handles that in DeSoto mm -hmm. is helpful, I think. And then also the judicial branch will be uh, represented there as well to talk about the court process and how the case and you know, protective orders and, the, and those vehicles available to protect you and the children. So uh, we think it's going to be very strong. It's October 20th from 2 to 5 at the Corner Theater here at Town Center. And uh, it's one that I think every citizen needs to be there. And you know, I am so pleased to see how the commission is addressing this whole issue. Um, because it, it is, no matter what anybody thinks, is something, while we're not proud that it's here in our city, but it goes back to the reason the Domestic Violence Advisory Committee then commission was was formed in the first place because we, you know, someone said to me, oh, when you say eradicate, that may not be possible. Well, we want to believe it is. And what the commission is doing, some of the steps you've taken, I am so, so very pleased to see that because 
we said we wanted this to be an education and awareness uh, a program that promotes education and awareness and you're doing just that uh, one additional thing well, I have a couple of more I'd like you to address but on this one in the case of teen dating uh, teen dating violence that is could you please share with our viewers some of the signs a parent or even a teacher uh, can look for as it relates to teen dating violence with cell phones in the hands of very young children nowadays and access to social media and the internet, it makes it extremely challenging for parents. Mm -hmm. If you notice that uh, your teen or even your preteen is isolating themselves, sometimes it's normal that they want to stay and spend time in their room, mm -hmm. but if it's an inordinate, uh, inordinately stressful um, attitude and tied to their cell phone, etc., it could be they're being controlled by somebody. Uh, a friend that's putting pressure on them, uh, a friend that um, they, they don't want to hurt their feelings but they've said no to, and um, there's that control factor mm -hmm. that starts very young. Um, the, the thing that grabs me is the statistics of uh, teens that are victims to murders. 70, I'm sorry, 61% of the teen murders last year in the United States were to keep them from talking about the perpetrator in the, in the situation. That, mm -hmm. that grabbed me, so we, digged a yes. uh, we dug a little bit uh, further on that. The teen suicide rate is extremely high. We hear about it uh, very often, mm -hmm. about they were bullied on the internet or they were bullied at their school or whatever. Um, we, we've got to educate the counselors, the teachers, the parents, which is what our symposium will, will set the groundwork for, yes. that this is real. Um, you, you've got to catch it early on. The, um, the rate of teens at, in our school system that aren't engaged in extracurricular activity are prime candidates mm -hmm. for this type of bullying because they're outsiders from the, the mainstream, the, the popular kids. That's also a sign to look for. Uh, teachers see the kids more each day than the parents yes, do. Absolutely. So for them to be the eyes and ears and um, become for this to become relevant in their classroom, mm -hmm. that if they see someone isolating that maybe hadn't been, uh, maybe year over year their their personality changes have appeared, mm -hmm. uh, that that's when it's time to kind of take them aside and, and try and find out what's going on. They're again trying to get involved in something is always is always difficult. Sure. But um, we're, we're really trying to focus in 2019 on the commission, on the younger youth, and catch some of this before it becomes dating related. But um, teens need to know that their bodies are their bodies. Yes. And they, they need to learn to respect yes. themselves and that they, don't, they aren't a property, they don't belong to somebody. Mm -hmm. We've got great teens in, in this town but we know it goes on, and we, we know that we've got a job to do, to work together with the school district. Yes, absolutely, and that was the, the, you know, the reason we thought to put this committee and commission together, we needed representation from the school district, and so I'm very pleased that the school district has made that commitment, uh, and we work in close partnership with them well, I know you and uh, the Domestic Violence Advisory Commission have developed an impressive work plan for fiscal year 2019. And so I just would love for you to share with our viewing audience some of the highlights for the next fiscal year. Okay, I'd be glad to, and thanks for your kind words about that. We're, we're pretty proud of ourselves, quite honestly. <laughs> We've got a good team. You should be. Very good team. Uh, for those viewers, uh, the DVAC strategic plan is written by our commission, and what we do is we assess, uh, based on the previous three years, 
uh, where we reached the, the strongest audience, where we got the most response, um, where we have our touch points, where we need to uh, refocus uh, and shift our, our focus. And we write this strategic plan and then it funnels through the city's business plan yes. and they select out of our entire strategic plan where the city focus is going to be and, and where we're going to be assessed, so to speak. And so uh, one of the things we want to do in 2019 is, of course, to continue our spring and summer small bites yes. uh, that we had at the library this year. Um, we're, we're strategically expanding those to focus mm -hmm. on youth yes. and uh, have them at different days of the week and different times of the day so that it can be more widely spread. Mm -hmm. And then we, what we'd like to do is add a um, April uh, event as well for Sexual Assault Awareness Month because um, we're, we're looking at the stat reports with the police department and uh, there is a rise in sexual assaults as well. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're touching that difficult topic as well by having a region-wide event Wonderful. so that we can widen the net because I visited with folks in the other best south southwest cities and they too are fighting this battle. So mm -hmm. if we work together like we do so well in best southwest That's on other right. things, um, we can certainly conquer uh, this dragon. But um, we also have a vigil at the police department, and that is on October 17th this year, and that's when we honor the victims. And um, it's uh, a time of reflection more than it is of informational and awareness, but the community comes together at the police department. Of course, we'll have our float there uh, indicating and representing the victims from last year, but it's a time to uh, focus on those that are still hurting and uh, those that need to be heard and are mm -hmm. ready to tell their story. So that's always a, a very good event and uh, a place where it's safe to talk about it. Yes. But um, we have social media as well. Yes. And uh, what we'd like to do is ask the viewing audience uh, to like our uh, social media page on Facebook. It's DeSoto Domestic Violence Advisory Commission. Please like the page and like and share what we post. Uh, we try to put little nuggets out there uh, about the awareness piece of it, but also to promote some of our partnerships and some of our events. So it's a good place for you to uh, safely comment and find out what we can do differently, what we can add to the programs, et cetera. What's on your mind, share it with us. Great, well, uh, if there's uh, no additional comments you'd like to make. I think we're going to wrap this program up today, but would not do it without saying to you, thank you for what you're doing, your leadership, your very capable leadership, and to the entire commission. Uh, we want to thank them. So please pass along the uh, city of DeSoto, because I speak not only uh, on my behalf, but on behalf of the entire city council and the administration, how much we appreciate uh, the job that you're doing. And it just seems like everything has picked up. Uh, the pace has certainly picked up, and I think it's necessary that we do because we are still committed to the eradication of domestic violence in the city of DeSoto. And so uh, this concludes our segment today on Focus on Leadership. We thank you so much for viewing, and our uh, guest, Mary Kay Dewberry, who is chair, the current chair of the commission, has given you uh, so much information. Uh, along with that, she has encouraged you to visit uh, the website for domestic violence and reach out to us if there's any input you would like to give. And certainly, if you're the victim uh, of domestic violence, please, please take advantage of the information you've heard and if you are the perpetrator there's help for you too. So thank you again. Goodbye.